Thank you so much for having me. Hi, everyone. Um, delighted to be here today to speak to you. I was asked to speak a little bit about mechanisms to support university social responsibility and also uh, sustainable public procurement. So I think I have about 20 minutes today. So I'll just try and give you a taster of some of the things that we're doing here at the University of Edinburgh um, to support both of those topics. Um, unfortunately, some of my icons at the bottom of the presentation are uh, are not visible, but that's all right. Hopefully everything else still um, looks as planned. So here's the agenda. As I said, I'll spend about sort of half my time on university responsibility and the kind of governance mechanisms, the policies, uh, and the different structures we have at the University of Edinburgh to integrate sustainability into our operations. And then I'll talk as well about sustainable um, public procurement and some of the things we're doing specifically on that. And then we'll have some time for questions. Um, I'm reading some notes off screen, so if I turn away from the screen, that's why. <laughs> um, so uh, just as a as a uh, introduction, um, as you can imagine, we have a really large and complex supply chain at the University of Edinburgh to support our academic activities and our campus operations. And we purchase a really diverse range of goods and services. And last year, our spend, um, in the 2018-2019 academic year, it was almost 300 million pounds. So we buy a lot, <laughs> a lot of products, a lot of services. And um, so to help us manage sustainability risks associated with our supply chains and which are with our purchases, um, we have adopted a, uh, a tool that was produced by the Scottish government called the Sustainable Public Procurement Prioritization Tool. Um, and this helps organizations uh, prioritize environmental and socioeconomic risks associated with, um, with their supply chains and with commodities that they purchase. So we have found this tool to be really useful in helping us manage um, the really sort of diverse and complex array of, of um, procurements that the university makes. And what we've done is we've used this tool, which is a sort of matrix, a uh, ranking matrix, um, and we've applied it to five kind of categories that we see as being priorities in terms of sustainable procurement. And for us, those are catering and food, um, travel services, estates and construction, laboratory and medical equipment, and then ICT equipment. Um, and so this graphic that's on the screen shows the output of the catering assessment, um, and it shows various uh, different types of products we buy ranked in terms of um, the, the risks. And so what this does is it helps us then um, uh, translate this risks and prioritize them in terms of where we focus our sustainable procurement efforts. And so these risk assessments help inform our strategies that we have. Um, we have four procurement strategy teams within the university. And so each team creates an annual um, strategy, which includes sustainability um, and which highlights upcoming procurements that are particularly high priority uh, linked back to our risk assessment. And then it specifies risk mitigation actions that we will take, um, whether that is sort of um, applying certain requirements or sort of labels within the tender or um, engaging with suppliers um, during contract management or undertaking a sort of supplier sustainability assessment. It could be a variety of different um, mechanisms. So this is one way which we uh, implement sustainable public procurement at the university. Unfortunately, I don't have much time to go into detail, but um, I've linked in all, all my slides to uh, web pages that have more information. And so we'll share that afterwards and you can, you can take a closer look. Another mechanism we have to support sustainable public procurement at the University of Edinburgh is policies. So where it's appropriate, we develop policies to set out our approach to sourcing, sourcing goods and services which um, are known to have environmental or human rights issues associated with them. And so these policies will specify sort of certain standards um, that we expect our, um, our purchases to meet, uh, certain actions that we'll take during the procurement. And in addition to this, the policies always include commitments to raise awareness about the issue as well, because we recognize that as a place of learning, we have a responsibility um, not only to purchase sustainably, but also to sort of share what we know with staff and students and people in our community. So we often will in, 
conjunction with these policies, run events, um, publish briefings or other kind of engagement materials to inform staff and students about what we're doing and about what they can do as well. So I'll list it on the screen are um, just a list of a few of the procurement policies we have. Another tool uh, that exists to support sustainable procurement here um, is our code of conduct and our and the sustain tool. So the university has adopted um, a code of conduct which was developed by the Scottish University and Higher Education sector, um, which sets out social, environmental, and ethical standards that suppliers are expected to comply with. Um, and within Scotland, we've also developed a supplier sustainability assessment tool, which is called Sustain, which is applied during contract management. And it's overseen by APUC, which is the Purchasing Consortium for Scottish Universities and Colleges, but it's available for use um, across, across the sector. Um, and the purpose of the tool is to assess suppliers' compliance with the code of conduct. So the tool asks suppliers a series of questions about um, a range of social accountability topics, such as recruitment processes or employment practices and health and safety practices, and suppliers respond and upload evidence to, um, to support their response, which is then assessed. And an action plan is created off the back of that with um, sort of improvements that are suggested to the suppliers, or if necessary, this can initiate as well a further site visit um, to clarify certain points or investigate if there are concerns. And the results are shared again with um, universities and colleges across Scotland. So it's a, it's a joined up approach, a collaborative approach um, to uh, supplier sustainability management. Another mechanism we have within the university is something we call our living labs approach. So what this means is that we work hard to um, use our own academic and research capabilities to try and solve sustainability issues that we're facing as an institution. Um, so we work a lot with researchers here and with students, specifically master's students, um, to, to do research projects linked to responsible purchasing. Um, so just as a taster in the last year, we had a, a master's student from the business school who wrote a dissertation for us looking at how the university can better support living wages in global supply chains. And she evaluated um, a number of our suppliers who are participating in voluntary schemes um, such as Fairware and, um, and evaluated how effective those schemes are at supporting living wages and then made recommendations to us for things we could do in the future to, um, to be more effective. We also host a law student every year, um, a student from the School of Law uh, program in human rights to look at some aspect of modern slavery and supply chains for us. And so this year we had um, our project looking at how the university can uh, apply a grievance mechanism, which would be accessible to workers in our supply chain, um, and how we could uh, support more effective grievance mechanisms with, within our suppliers as well as part of either terms and conditions or um, by working with suppliers to design more effective grievance mechanisms. So um, our collaborations with students um, are really invaluable in terms of enhancing our understanding and enhancing our capacity as well to explore more topics than you know, just one person would be able to on their own. Um, we have a number of other initiatives uh, that we're working on as well. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have time to go into a huge amount of detail of, about all of them, but we're a member of the Make ICT Fair Consortium, which is an EU funded group that aims to improve the lives of workers in electronic supply chains around the world. Um, so we are part of that um, conducting research in Indonesian factories, uh, looking at uh, things like freedom of association uh, for workers, and that will be published as part of the consortium. And then we aim to sort of take that research and learnings from that project and then apply them to procurements within the university. So always trying to link research with practice. Uh, we're a member of Electronics Watch as well, with, which many of, of you might have heard of. It is an organization that um, monitors working conditions in electronics factories around the world on behalf of public sector affiliates. 
We um, do a lot to try and promote fair work within our procurements, including payment of the real, a real living wage. So we have included scored questions um, within tenders where appropriate um, to ask suppliers about their working practices and working conditions for staff. Um, we also are working with a number of suppliers, mainly construction and IT suppliers, to deliver additional benefits for our community that are beyond um, the, uh, the sort of the service um, offered in the contract. So as part of a contract, um, suppliers would offer a number of apprenticeships for local young people, for example, or work placement opportunities. Um, uh, so what we're trying to do is ensure that kind of the investment that we're making is delivering inclusive growth that has a benefit um, for people within the city region um, that the university is a part of and that we're having a positive impact on our community through purchasing. We're also doing quite a lot to engage more with social enterprises. So this year we're looking at running a series of workshops that would give social enterprises more information about what's involved in supplying a large public body um, and helping them kind of upskill so that they feel like they're in a position to, um, to participate in in tendering processes in the future. Okay, um, so now just moving on to the second half of the presentation, which is more about mechanisms more generally to support social responsibility that we have um, at the University of Edinburgh. Um, so I've just picked out sort of some different um, kind of governance uh, tools that we have and policies and strategies and happy to provide more information um, about any of this after the presentation. So the university's strategic commitments support sustainability um, sort of right from the very top. Uh, we have a strategy 2030, which sets out four key focus areas for the university for the next decade. And one of these is civic and social responsibility, um, which means sort of ensuring that our actions deliver positive change for the local region and also globally. Um, so it really sort of drives um, a commitment to sustainability right from the very top. And we have produced a social and civic responsibility plan, um, which describes how we will deliver the, uh, the vision in the strategy 2030. Um, and then underneath that, we have a number of other kind of policies, commitment strategies that deal with specific issues like biodiversity, like climate, like waste. Um, so we have a, a very good structure in terms of commitments and policies to help guide um, our activities and to provide a long-term vision for the university. In terms of our civic and social responsibility plan, um, I've just put the, the sort of headline commitments here. So as part of that plan, the university has committed to becoming a zero carbon and a zero waste university um, and to incorporating the sustainable development goals um, into our activities and using these as a lens through which we sort of um, uh, design and monitor our impact. Um, and we've also committed to increasing participation in higher education and supporting inclusion and working with our local community. Another mechanism we have to support university responsibility are our committees. Um, so we have a number of committees that provide governance, oversight, decision-making mechanisms for sustainability matters, and they meet regularly. Um, the most important one is the Social Responsibility and Sustainability Committee, which has representation from across the university, operational departments, as well as um, our schools and colleges and um, students as well. Um, and that committee reports directly up into the university sort of central management group. And so we have very clear um, kind of lines of accountability when it comes to sustainability, which allows for um, decisions to be escalated as necessary and for, for us to sort of set um, long-term um, objectives um, to work towards. Uh, another mechanism we have to support university responsibility is something called integrated reporting, which um, you might be aware of. So in 2016, the finance department here adopted the 
International Integrated Reporting Committee's framework for integrated reporting. That's a mouthful. Um, and what this means is that we aim to uh, think beyond just our financial value and incorporate non-financial measures into our assessment and reporting process. And so the university's annual report covers not just our financial accounts, but also it reports on our carbon emissions, um, the amount of waste we're producing, um, how we've supported and invested in the community and, and lots of other measures of um, value, which are not financial. And this means that our impact on um, natural capital, on human capital and social capital are seen as key to how the university views its performance and demonstrates its value and, um, and to articulates how it delivers impact. And so by reporting on these types of capitals, we've been able to integrate sustainability topics into organizational reporting and not have them be seen as sort of something separate <laughs> that's just reported over here, um, but that isn't part of the larger whole. Um, and so this has been really a really powerful tool and a way to engage colleagues in, um, in other departments as well. We do also produce a sustainability report once a year, which goes into more detail about our activities and in addition to that, by law, we have to report in Scotland on a number of um, a number of activities every year. So we have to disclose our carbon emissions. We have to um, produce a modern slavery statement, and we also have to produce an annual procurement report, which describes actions taken to support sustainable procurement um, as part of the Scottish sustainable procurement duty that came into effect a couple of years ago. Uh, and finally, uh, the uh, one mechanism, one one large and important mechanism we have at the university to support sustainability and responsibility is the Department for Social Responsibility and Sustainability, which is where I work. And um, our purpose is to help the university deliver on its vision to um, to positively impact society. And um, the the text here is taken from our sort of department plan. Our vision is to see social responsibility and sustainability embedded and integrated across the whole organization, um, everything we do. So um, we exist to sort of support departments to take ownership for um, the activities that they do that have a sustainability impact and to develop strategies to make sure that that, that impact is positive. Um, and so we're uh, conducting research, we run various programs and activities to engage staff, and we provide um, kind of guidance and support about a number of different topics to the university, ranging from circular economy um, to community engagement and um, sustainable building design. I included this just to show uh, where our department sits within the organizational structure of the university. It may not be super clear, but essentially we sit under um, a branch of the university called Corporate Services Group. And we sit alongside departments like the Estates Department, the Catering Department, um, and Finance. And so what this means is that um, we, are a separate unit. We're not based within, for example, an estates team, which traditionally a sort of environmental focused team might have been couched within an estates department, um, but we exist as a separate entity. And so this has enabled us to work on a really broad range of topics as a university and to work in a way that reflects the real inter interdependencies between environmental and social justice issues, <laughs> um, that these aren't separate. And by separating them, um, you sort of lose the bigger picture. So we're able to interweave those together. Um, and this just shows the different priorities and areas that our department works on, which I already mentioned before. So climate change and energy, carbon reduction, uh, waste and circular economy, supply chains and fair trade, that's my area, uh, responsible investment, 
learning, teaching, and research. So we are collaborating with academics to integrate sustainability into the curriculum and to draw out sustainable development goals um, within teaching and make sure that every student, regardless of their degree program, has an opportunity to learn about sustainability and to learn about um, the sustainable development goals. And then also community engagement and working with um, partners based around the city and in the region to reduce inequalities. Um, thank you for listening, and hopefully that gave you a little snapshot of some of the things we're doing at the University of Edinburgh, and happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, I can see a question here about fair trade and good food policy. Hmm. Okay, I think everyone can see the question, but it's about um, how do you make the case for paying more for products that carry a label, um, a sustainability label? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think using that, um, that capitals framework that I discussed as part of the integrated reporting um, can be very useful. So um, you're describing how the, the decision adds value, not only in terms of financial terms, but also in terms of enhancing the other sorts of capitals that the university ultimately relies on. So human capital, natural capital, um, social capital. So taking a very broad view of value <laughs> um, and that best value is not necessarily cheapest, it's best value for the environment, for people, for society. Um, and then it also you know, needs to be financially sustainable. So broadening the definition of value and how you communicate that when, when making um, an argument. Also linking back to any organizational strategies. Um, so if the organization